Hello, this is Father Frank Pavone, National Director of Priests for Life. I wanted to offer some perspectives today on the conversation taking place around the country about the use of deception in the pro-life cause. Recently, live-action films which uh, revealed the uh, deceptive practices of Planned Parenthood, and also over the years various other pro-life groups have done sting operations, spying, undercover work uh, to reveal uh, the evil that's being done by the abortion industry. Now we know that uh, spying, undercover activity, uh, sting operations are done uh, by governments all the time, by law enforcement in, in situations of war and, uh, and the defense of, of life. So any argument that says uh, this cannot be done or is, is, is immoral all the time also has to cover these wider things. It's not just the pro-life movement that's doing this, uh, this kind of activity. And obviously we, we have to always abide by uh, the judgment of the church's magisterium in these cases and we embrace what the catechism says uh, about lying and about obviously the principle that the end never justifies the means. The question here, though, is, is, is analogous to the question of the act of killing. We know that killing is intrinsically wrong, it's, 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 it's evil, and, and yet what is intrinsically wrong is, is murder. In other words, killing the innocent. We know that there are circumstances where an action takes a human life, and yet in the cases, for example, of self-defense or morally legitimate acts in warfare, there can be an action that ends a human life, that does not fall under the category of murder. So the question is, can it be the same thing with speech? Can, can, can words come out of our mouth that do not correspond exactly with the truth, and yet in that case, be justifiable? And I have two articles here about, uh, one of them by Boniface Ramsey, the two traditions on lying and deception, going back to church fathers like Hillary and Chrysostom, uh, pointing out that there are circumstances in which deception can be used, uh, and another article, The History of Thought About the Morality of Lying, this is a legitimate consideration. I'm under the seal of confession, for example, if John Smith comes to me and, and, and confesses that uh, he stole $100, if tomorrow sometime someone comes up to me and says, do you know if John Smith stole $100? I can't say yes. That would break the seal of confession. If I say no or I don't know, Neither of those responses corresponds to the truth. He did steal it, and I do know, but I can't break the seal of confession. So in some circumstances, what we actually say might not correspond to the truth, and yet it might be justified. Uh, in the case of Planned Parenthood, I see an, an analogy to the question of someone who is attacking your life. Someone's attacking your life in self-defense you can harm them and your action might even take their life. It's not murder. Planned Parenthood is engaged in a massive act of deception. And that's exactly, in the service of the truth, what the actions of those who do the undercover work are exposing. Their work in going in there and posing as something that they aren't is actually an action in service of the truth. It's really an experiment when you think about it, because Planned Parenthood could, if they want, coming out, come out smelling like roses. If, if a couple comes to them and says, well, I'm, a, I'm, a, uh, uh, I'm, a, I'm operating a sex trafficking operation and, and uh, I need you to give an, an abortion to, uh, to this girl who's a minor, it essentially is a question. W will you do this in these circumstances? Or will you cover this up? Will you do the abortion anyway? Will you, will you avoid... Uh, the requirements of the law to report. Really what's happening is we're posing a question. We know that they are a, 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 an industry that's engaged in a massive criminal cover-up and it, it needs to be exposed. So the person going in there it, asking that question is giving Planned Parenthood an opportunity to, to, uh, uh, to say, no, we're, we're not going to cooperate with this. We're not going to cover this up. Uh, it's not trying to manipulate Planned Parenthood into a situation, into doing something that they don't want to do. It's asking them what they do do. Anyway, these are some perspectives on this question. It's under a, a great deal of discussion these days, and we have a lot more uh, to, to say about it. But I hope that these reflections are, are helpful uh, to those of you who are trying to sort this out. I have counseled and, and uh, uh, guided uh, Lila Rose over the years uh, 
and encouraged her in this activity. Similarly with Life Dynamics, with the various uh, cover-up operations, we have, we have uh, files of uh, transcripts of, of tapes from the conventions of abortionists, uh, which were, we were able to obtain only by having somebody go into those conferences uh, as, a, uh, as a participant, pretending to be on the other side of the issue, so that we could get that, uh, that information. So uh, we've been dealing with this matter for many years, and of course we are open to uh, your input into it, and uh, I'll be glad to send you copies of these articles uh, that I referred to before, if you would like. Thanks, and God bless you.